For the following exercises, evaluate the expressions writing the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so we've done tons of problems like this already. If you guys are on our complex number playlist, you can go back to any videos that you're, you know, that you might want to go to before we try this one out, because this one's going to be like a, a simplified one, bringing all the concepts that we learned in that playlist already. And if you guys aren't on the playlist, you could go to the description below to check out the complex number playlist that we have, or all the math playlists that we have in that matter. Okay, so let's now tackle this. So I'm dealing with imaginary numbers because I know that I have I values. I just means that these numbers aren't real numbers, right? They are imaginary, and imaginary numbers, just by definition, is the square root of negative one, right? Because we can only take square roots of positive values, right? The square root of 25 is five, square root of 16 is four. But if you put into the calculator a square root of negative 25, the calculator is going to, you know, explode and it's not going to understand what you're doing. There's gonna be an error, which means that this is a non-real value there are imaginary values to it. So we're just in like imaginary world, which is a world that I like to be in all the time. <laughs> I, I, my imagination is still here, but anyway. Okay, so we have two things that are in parentheses, right? That are multiplied by each other. We always wanna kind of simplify that. And then that is being divided by another parenthesis that has an I in it. Now we know from doing tons of problems like these that I, the imaginary component, cannot be in the denominator. So somehow we have to get rid of that. But the first thing that I'm going to work on is I'm going to just try to simplify the top. So I'm going to do that over here. Okay, so we have 2 plus I and that's all being multiplied by four minus two i. Okay, so this is the play it fair method, right? You always start from left to right, and what you wanna do is you wanna take your first term in that first parenthesis, and you're going to multiply it by the first term in the second parenthesis, but you have to be fair. You also need to multiply that two by the second term, the negative two i. But then you even have to be more fair because what about the i value, right? If the two is getting multiplied, the i certainly wants to be multiplied as well. So you have to do the same thing. The i needs to be multiplied by that four and the i needs to be multiplied by that negative two i. So there's four different multiplication things that you're going to be doing. So let's divvy it up. Two times four is eight. So we're starting off with eight. 2 times a negative 2i, just be certain that you're using your signs, right? This would be a negative 4i or minus 4i. And now you work with the second term. i times 4 would be a positive 4i. And then i times a negative 2i would be a negative 2i squared. You had 1i you had another i, you had two i's total for that one, so that turns into an i squared. Now, let's simplify this, right? I have a negative four i and a positive four i. I could add those together because they have the same variable, they just have one i, but negative four plus four is zero, so that gets rid of that. So we're down to eight minus two i squared. Simplified complex notation only allows us to have one i in our answer. So we have an i squared. We can't just leave it as an i squared. But we know by this definition, right, that if I have two i's or i squared, i times i, I'm going to take my i value which is the square root of negative one, and I'm just gonna square it, right? You see how I just took the i, which was this, and I just 
plugged it in, and I just squared it. But then what is the square root and a square? They're opposites of each other. So I squared would just be negative one. The square root and the square goes bye-bye because they're opposites. So we know that this is a negative one. Oh, and then we get rid of the I there. That's pretty cool. So this would be eight minus two times a negative one. So eight plus two, and that equals 10. So that means that this whole numerator, even though it looked pretty, pretty scary in the beginning, this part just equal 10. And now I can't really simplify the bottom because there's no two parentheses. So it's just one plus I. However, we can't leave it as this because simplified notation, I can't have I's in the denominator. So I have to do something with that. So now we're at this stage of the game, 10 over one plus I. So we've done tons of problems like this before in which we want to get rid of the I in the denominator. And remember, you have to multiply by the opposite of what's being done in the function that you have here, or, you know, the little piece of the, the puzzle here. So if this is one plus I, what you need to multiply by is one minus I. You always have to multiply by the opposite, but just like we had to play fair here, we have to play fair here. If you multiply the denominator by one minus I, the numerator is gonna be left out. So you have to multiply the numerator by the same exact thing. And that's how we can multiply stuff in like thin air, right? Because technically this equals one. They cancel each other out. But in theory, we could actually do the math to get rid of the I in the denominator. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, now we have 10 being multiplied by one minus I. And then I have these two function guys, right? I have one plus I being multiplied by one minus I. So we're just going to simplify the top and then we're gonna simplify the bottom and see what we get. Let's do, I guess let's do the bottom first, right? Because that's why we, we did this whole process because we need to get the I out. So we have one plus I times one minus I. We're gonna play fair. We need to take the first term and multiply it by one and by negative I, but then you have to take the I and multiply it by the one and by the negative I. So one times one is one. One times a negative I is negative I or negative one I. I times one is a positive one I or plus I. And then I times a negative I is a negative I squared. You picked up two I's. Simplify this. I have a negative I plus I. Oh, same thing that happened before. That cancels because they're exactly opposite. So this equals one minus I squared. And remember, I squared is just a negative one. So this would be the same thing as if I just said that this was a negative one. So one minus a negative one. Keep change change. This is really one plus one, right? So that would be equal to two. So this whole thing on the bottom equals two. <laughs> Crazy, right? It looks scary here, but it just equals two. Now we just have to work with the top and you're multiplying 10 by this whole um, parenthesis. So you gotta be fair. You gotta multiply the 10 by the one and the 10 by the negative I. So 10 times one is 10. 10 times I, or a negative I, is negative 10 I. This is basically your final answer because I have an I in the numerator and not in the denominator. However, let's just split this up even more into real and um, imaginary components. Remember, if you have something in the numerator being divided by just one denominator, you can split them up. So you can say 10 
divided by two. So ten divided by two minus minus this part ten i divided by two. And now we just simplify. Oh, ten divided by two is five, and ten divided by two is five. Right, so this would be basically five minus five i. And I know I'm running a little bit close to the subscribe button. It's somewhere over here. Hey, what's up, subscribe button? Um, so I'm just going to put the answer over here. So it would be five minus five i, and that is your final answer. Ooh, a lot of work for this one, guys. But we just go through it step by step and we just check ourselves so that we don't make any mistakes but that's what math is all about it's just a puzzle and just taking it step by step working through the formulas to arrive at an answer so finally we have our answer of 5 minus 5i guys hopefully this helped let me know what you think in the comments and give this video a like and subscribe and smash the like button or whatever they do smash the subscribe button something like that i don't know but Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great, great day. Keep studying hard. Do so awesome on those exams, and I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.